Hey Jules Bus Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new I know you can benefit. I was going to say welcome to my eyebrows. <laughs> oh my gosh people yes animals are being groomed. Some people have gotten in with their hairdressers. My eyebrow place is not open and when you've got eyebrows like this you do not play. I'm not kidding you I need a professional. <laughs> So, you know, there's a lot of women. This is, this is, let's go to uh, Joyful June because it'll fit right in. So for those of you who are here for Joyful June, you're right on time. It's a great time to be joyful. And today's intention, even if you're new, stay with me. Today's intention was to decide to look for what's good, even on the difficult days. So with these rather luscious eyebrows. I thought what's good is that there's a lot of women who no longer have their eyebrows. They overplucked, they shaved them and they didn't grow back, they wish they had eyebrows. I've, you know, said that I would donate mine to cancer, like, you know, people who need eyebrows after cancer treatment to no avail. Nobody's taking me up on it. I will have these eyebrows to my dying day. And I know it because my mother had them, my aunt had them, like people in my family keep these eyebrows forever. So <laughs> I'll be cleaning them up as soon as I can. But that was finding the good in a difficult situation. Okay, so what else was good? I'd love to know what you guys did to decide something good, even on the difficult days. All right, another one. It was 109 degrees. And... I found the good by remembering when it was 116. So that was really good. And then, oh, I have the most precious little story. I went to walk, because hello, I'm getting in my steps, my friends. I went for 10,000 and ended up at 11,500. What? Oh, no, she didn't. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Awesome, right? Despite the heat. So I was out there walking that track in 105, 107 degrees. The great thing is with this diet, right, which is largely raw and alkaline, I didn't sunburn at all. Oh my gosh, back in the day, I would have fried instantly. Oh my gosh. And even if it didn't show up right away, it would show up. Nah, not at all. That was awesome. That was finding the good in a very difficult situation with that heat. But another thing is, okay, so I was walking the track and all of a sudden I heard a clunk and saw something out of the side of my vision, my peripheral, right? And it was a, not a crow, it was a raven. Ravens are bigger than crows. It was a raven baby and his mouth was wide open and he was looking, are you my mother? No. Nope. I'm not your mother. Oh my goodness. And then his little foot was hurt. And he was like, oh, and I said, oh, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. His parents were freaking. I mean, oh, seriously. They were yelling and squawking and going crazy. And I was like, peace be with you. I'm not going to hurt your little person at all. Well, he managed to get his footing and he kind of worked his way across this really gigantic lawn all the way to the back corner, which luckily had shade trees. So smart. So I was like, oh my gosh, please bother. Let this little person fly, take care of them. So I continued to walk the track and stuff, and then I had to get back to my life, and then I came out later. When I came out later, I realized his little brother had also fallen out, and he was like underneath the um, air conditioning system, which again was very smart for the heat. I mean, wow, so smart. Again, the parents were freaking and saying, leave our kids alone. And I was like, I'm going to leave them alone, but what are you guys going to do, you know? And um, I was very concerned all day. I mean, they're wild. You can't do much for them. We're in the middle of a COVID. I, I didn't really know who I could call. Um, as the day progressed, that first brother, and I'm assuming they're boys, who was much bigger, actually got a sense of his wings a little bit and was kind of trying to go for it. He never flew while I was there, but I had a sense of his strength. The other brother, I was really pleased that he actually got out from under the air conditioner and started bouncing around a little, so that gave me some hope. But he's not as strong, and I don't know what his story will be. So I went back in the building, and I got some cups of water, like four cups of water, and strategically placed them wherever I could. And those two parents just continued to squawk at me and complain, but they had a sense that I was an advocate. I kept telling them I'm an advocate. So I'll have to see how that plays out tomorrow. I pray that they both made it. I pray it was just a matter of 
getting their feet under them. But the thing was, the parents built this phenomenal nest. Oh my gosh, I mean, the sticks, forget hay or anything. They had full-size sticks, you know, like a half inch uh, in diameter, amazing. And it was all up about 12 feet. They did it in this overhang. Well, when the kids fell out of the nest, it was smacked down on cement. How could they have known? Anyway, prayers for them. So it was good to just see that as well. Anyway, it was really beautiful to see how dedicated those parents were. All right, so for Joyful June, here's our intention for day four. And again, if you're just joining us, don't worry. And if it's not even June where you are, don't worry. <laughs> These are just good intentions, and I'll continue to give you many options throughout the month. So this next one is, I love it. It's reframe a worry and try to find a positive way to respond. So whatever's tripping you out and just won't stop, you know, bugging on your mind, something that you're just obsessing about and you probably can't change anyway, how can you reframe a worry and try to find a positive way to respond to that? That is brilliant. <laughs> Don't worry. I will have a worry tomorrow. That's a lot of worries. I will have a worry tomorrow, okay? I'm going to school every day. I am trying so hard to get my teacher stuff done and uh, things are um, running at an incredibly rapid pace. And in addition to the weather and all the other things going on, something will present. But I will reframe a worry and try to find a positive way to respond. I love that. All right, for those of you who are sticking around, I have some hot tips for you. Because again, I'm over the nonsense. I am on to wellness, okay? So yeah, I had to bust chops and do whatever I could to get those steps in, but I did it and I'm thrilled and um, praise God I will continue. So some of the tools that I use, one of them, I'm in another group, we're totally doing this. I often talk about the inner child. I talk about the uh, monkey mind and the importance of putting that at ease and children love to be appeased okay they love to be acknowledged they love to get little treats well we're doing non-caloric treats but giving your inner child a sticker to appease them giving them a glass bead it won't keep their interest for long but it could be just long enough for you to get back into your adult and get on with it okay so in another group that I'm in, we are doing on just our basic calendar, we're giving our little kid a sticker uh, to say, great job. And I'm actually writing in one that I ate clean, which is fabulous, and two, um, what my exercise was, okay? So I am definitely doing that, again, just for accountability for myself. If you don't have a calendar, don't worry about it. Just print one out. Literally, you can just go in and um, for insert, you can choose number of bars across, you know, go seven across, go five down and just fill in June. It's completely free. And then when you also do insert, you can choose image and you can put in the cutest pictures, pictures I can speak you want as your stickers. And then you're not wasting paper. You're not wasting stickers. Um, there is something, though, about a tangible prize. I, I know it's such a weird thing to think about, but it's been proven a gazillion times. Um, so that sticker, um, certainly the glass beads, because I'm going to remind you of the great tool, which of course is the Urge Jar by Brooke Castillo. And uh, just to get on with June 1st, I emptied my Urge Jar. Um, this is my Urge Jar. It literally says Urge Jar. And inside you can see these gigantic glass beads. And again, this costs nearly nothing, the glass beads. You get like 200 for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And there's a bunch of beautiful colors, but when I'm just starting, I like to use these jumbo ones because they really feel like I'm affirming whatever is good. And so I most certainly did. Look how big they are. Isn't that so cute? I love it. So little kids just love special things like a glass bead, right? And then I have different colored beads Anyway, you can get green, blue, clear. I think they're all beautiful. How am I showing you these? I never know how to show you with the camera. It's so weird. <laughs> okay, yes or no? Hi, how come everything seems so whack right now? All right, forget it. Um, anyway, I absolutely love, what do I do? Hold them up like that? Is that right? Okay, I absolutely love these. They're so beautiful. And then again, the best thing, and. I will totally include this in the description of the video because I've done videos on the Urge Jar, even though it is Brooke Castillo of the Life Coach School. But let me put my video in there. If you haven't had a chance, please watch it. It's really good. Um, but 
the best thing about the herbs jar is you only grace yourself every time you abstain from an urge. So you might be going, well, wait, didn't you just say you just refilled it? I did, but I've been so brave. I've had about 12 urges in that time. And you can give yourself more than one. You can give them all day long. And what do you do when the jar fills up? Not a prize. The jar filling up is the prize. You simply empty it and refill it. That's the beauty of it. Okay, so the stickers, which is a fabulous testimonial. The urge jar, which is so good. And then finally, the monkey mind. And I really do encourage you to get a physical monkey. Oh, sorry, monkey. <laughs> a physical monkey that represents your monkey, okay? I looked far and wide to find a monkey that appealed to me in a way that I said, ah, there you are. Um, so you might want to get a monkey. And again, I will include my videos on the monkey mind. I have a few of them. And I will put those in the description of the video. Being able to have a tangible monkey, um, what they really recommend is that you take the time you know, 10 minutes to actually listen to that monkey mind and jot it down and say, monkey, you're not allowed to complain throughout the day. You're not allowed to hoo, hoo, hoo me. But for those few minutes in the morning, I will listen to your every concern and I will write it down to honor you. But if you start hoo, hooing in the day, I'm going to shut you down because that is the time you get. You know what I mean? So you can be very specific with your monkey mind and believe it or not, Again, scientific proof, you can shut down that monkey mind. <laughs> so those are three great tools. So in addition to our joyful June, let's implement some of these tools from accountability on a simple calendar. Yes, I'm continuing to write down my food in my journal. Of course, I'm writing everything in my journal. But just a quick visual and a happy sticker to appease that inner child, a great monkey mind, and some lovely urge jar, glass beads, rocks, whatever you want, marbles work wonderfully. All of those things work. And again, look up in the description so that you can get some hot tips from other videos of Jules Bless Vegan. And until we talk again, my friends, I pray you're safe. And like if you like, join us if you haven't. And best of all, know that you're blessed. <laughs>